As Michigan's most powerful and influential voice for business, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce stands ready to serve you. Go to mychamber.com, that's M-I-C-H-A-M-B-E-R.com to learn more now. For your halftime entertainment, center court in the 313, welcome the Detroit Youth Choir. You are listening to the Detroit Youth Choir performing under the spotlight at Little Caesars Arena. Halftime shows at Pistons games are looking a little more like this these days. That is Detroit-centric, based on Detroit culture and talent. But it's not just halftime shows. The whole operation is feeling a bit more Detroit. There's a swag cam that flashes on the screen regularly, where fans show off their jewelry on the Jumbotron. Local businesses are being promoted. But as longtime Pistons fans know, that city connection wasn't quite there before the team moved out of Auburn Hills. And that's when we started talking music, fashion, the different elements of Detroit culture, um, car culture, the the small businesses that make up the city, um, the the pioneers that have been here forever through all the times, the great times. Like, how do we embody that? That's the VP of marketing for the Pistons. On this episode, we go to a Pistons game. Kerry Jr. the second reporting for the Detroit Free Press. All right, I'm about to go meet up with our Pistons writer, Omari Sankofa, and uh, we're gonna talk some basketball today. We post up on how the Pistons are transforming their relationship with the city, why, and what it means to city residents. I'm Kerry Jr. the second, and this is On The Line. Oh, there he is. Good to see you, sir. Nice to be out the house. I met up with Omari Sankofa II in the parking deck before he ushered me into the Little Caesars Arena a few hours before the game. Ah, uh, I feel like I'm VIP now. This is like a special life. Oh man, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> the behind the scenes reporter life. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, did you always want to be a like a sports reporter? Uh, probably since high school. Okay. Yeah, I would say. You know, I've always been an NBA fan. You know, played basketball a little bit growing up, but. You know, not not seriously, but okay. you know, just for somebody who always read the sports section and enjoy writing. I think reporting just kind of interested me when I was young. And, uh, you know, by the time I got to college, you know, got to see the newspaper and everything, I just kind of saw a lane for it. And for almost two years now, Sankofa has been our beat writer for the Detroit Free Press. His interest in the team also has roots in his youth. I was born and raised in the city, uh, parents live in the west side. Sankofa speaking with a little less background noise. Um, my parents were bas- basketball fans growing up, uh, Detroit bad boys. So, you know, growing up, I would say we probably had the Pistons on TV the most, um, along with the Lions. You know, when I was a kid, I would say we went to like a lot of games, like, oh, we went to a game every season. And I would say when I was in high school, you know, especially once tickets got a little bit cheaper because the Pistons weren't as good anymore, uh, I was probably going to, uh, you know, maybe a game or two every year. And uh, when I was in college, uh, you know, tickets are, you know, 14, 15 bucks. Uh, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm just driving out to, you know, Arvid Hills. What's a very memorable game or moment that you remember from going and being at the Palace? What was something that, that sticks out to you? Yeah, I went to Chauncey Billups' uh, Jersey retirement, and I believe that was back in 2016. I came all the way down here to see Chauncey Billups retire his jersey. So that was, the, that was the most memorable for sure. That would be one of the Pistons' final moments at the Palace. They would move back to Detroit the following year. And that's when the Pistons started to really connect more with their namesake. You know, they've always had Detroit stuff, but I would say that there was never really a uh, explicit sort of like Detroit branding strategy that they're doing now. The offices didn't move to Detroit until 2019. I think once that happened, that kind of marked the point where the franchise said, okay, like, so, you know, it's time for us to 
lean in more and, you know, really embrace this point we're in as an organization and kind of put the city as a for at the forefront. Some of it predates me, but, you know, there's a concerted effort about the move uh, from Auburn Hills to downtown. Um, you know, that was an important piece of just connecting with the city. That's Tyrell Kirkham. He's the vice president of marketing and branding with the Pistons and has been with the organization since just before this branding strategy launched. We caught up with him a few days after the game. And um, a lot of that, you know, definitely has been elevated since since moving downtown. And, you know, I think as we look at the Pistons being a community asset, it was important to take that approach in everything that we do. Community asset. Can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, we just want to leverage, whether it's with the Pistons Performance Center here in, in New Center, um, Pistons games, our efforts in the community, we truly want to serve um, as, as a resource and an asset for the community in which we serve, um, whether it's around our voting initiatives, vaccinations, um, you know, the opportunity for kids to come here and utilize our facility for um, basketball clinics. What can we do to amplify it? You know, I think the city has has embraced it and we've embraced the city. It's it's definitely a, a two-way street. Um, and a lot of the cues that we take are just, you know, a product of the people, so to speak. So I'm gonna go back and go back to November, I think 18th, 2020, when we when we unveiled the 313 logo and changed our brand narrative to D up. That was the changing point with respect to we're going all in with you know as it relates to how we connect with the city of detroit there was a there was a visual symbol if you're in the d or from the d you already know what it is but for any listeners outside michigan 313 is the much loved detroit area code the pistons started using it in a secondary pistons logo as they embarked on reconnecting with the city they launched a campaign called d up you know which can mean detroit up or obviously it's, it's a, a play on you know, like being up, like, you know, playing defense. But for the Pistons, it's also a campaign to celebrate Detroit and highlight folks in the city. Obviously the basketball reference, but the continual rise of Detroit was really important to us as we were coming up with sort of the brand narrative that we wanted to carry forward. And with that, they've just had, uh, you know, a bunch of different initiatives and, um, you know, branding campaigns in the arena to kind of tie into the city. We started thinking about, okay, what is that association with 313? Like, Okay, beyond the logo, what does that mean for us connecting with the city? And that's when we started talking music, fashion, the different elements of Detroit culture, um, car culture, the, the small businesses that make up the city, um, the, the pioneers that have been here forever through all the t- times, the great times. Like, how do we embody that? And on the flashier side of things, that brings us to initiatives like the Swag Cam. Tell me about the Swag Cam. Yeah, so the swag cam, um, you know, you could think of it as being similar to maybe like a kiss cam or, um, you know, something they'll show in the arena where they're zooming in on people who are sitting in the stands. It's time for the swag cam! And the swag cam, uh, for the most part, just features, you know, people in the arena who are wearing ice, you know, like they have their, you know, jewelry around their neck. There's ice! And then there's Detroit ice! You know, like you would think that they were Jim Jones or somebody, just just insane amounts of ice, and the jumbotron will zoom in, and you know, the people will be able to flex and shovel off and all that. And they do it. I say they probably do it like once a week or so. And you know, it's going viral. I tweeted a video a few weeks ago that got you know, I think last I checked, I had like probably around fifteen thousand retweets, and it's been uh, really cool. It's been rewarding to. To, to see the buzz. Authenticity is at the core of everything that we do. And when you see Detroiters come to games, there's no time for sweats and dirts, right? They're putting on their their best outfits. They're coming swagged out. Footwear, you know, just it's a different vibe. And uh, we were able to bring that to life via the swag cam. It's, it's been great to, to see the respect, not only locally, and, you know, the, the, the people clamoring for it. There was a guy in my church growing up. Um, he used to wear a purple suit to church. Not Nothing too crazy, just a purple suit. But I had never as a kid seen, you know, a suit like that. And I was like, what? I want a purple suit. And I wanted one so bad. And my, my dad eventually gave me one. So that was kind of my 
window into like how we, at least how the old, old, old cats, they, they get dressed up in Detroit. And I'm like, oh, this purple suit, mild, it's not, it's not ice, but that, that was my experience. Uh, Brother Ruben Collier, shout out to you, rest in peace. You know, like Detroit obviously is a city that's always been a hub for black culture. It's the blackest city in the United States uh, to an extent that, you know, also ties into hip hop culture and hip hop, you know, you're going to have ice that people at the games who are <laughs> iced up. And I think that's been unique uh, to see. Uh, I've never seen the ice cam, you know, like I've, I've been to a game and just about every NBA arena, you know, often multiple times. I've been to a lot of Pistons games over the years. I think this is a, a brand new thing that they launched this season. And, you know, it's been really cool to see. After the break, the game kicks off. And we zoom out from the swag cam with Sankofa to see what local businesses are getting out of this and how Detroiters feel about it. As Michigan's leading statewide business advocacy organization, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce is on the job every day standing up for job providers in the legislative, political, and legal arenas. We are the unified voice of thousands of members who employ over one million Michiganders. We work with trade associations and local chambers of commerce of every size and kind in all 83 counties of the state. We know business in Michigan. Learn more today about how we can protect, connect, and strengthen your business. Whether that's advocating on your behalf at the Capitol, helping meet your informational training and networking needs, or boosting your bottom line visibility and voice, we're on the job for you. Make my chamber your chamber. Go to mychamber.com, that's M-I-C-H-A-M-B-E-R.com, to learn more now. And we're back with Free Press Pistons reporter Omari Sankofa II talking about how the Detroit team is seeking to support its city. It's evident, even with just a visit to the game. How y'all doing? Yeah, this is Kerry. Nice to meet y'all. He's, yeah, he's, he's our podcast producer. So. Yep. Remember when we were in the stadium at the game when they were shooting around and you were pointing to um, how they d- display small businesses in the in the arena. Can you just talk a little bit about like some of the things people might see if they're at the game? You will see advertising for, uh, you know, the small business of the day. The Detroit Pistons recognize and promote locally owned small businesses in our community each game. They have Bees Detroit. Tonight's business is Bees Squeeze, a natural lemonade company. You know, they were being advertised, and uh, they have the small business owner come in at, at, at the game, and uh, they usually run sort of like a, I would say like a commercial on the Jumbotron at a certain point during the game, introducing the business and, you know, who the small business owner is, so they'll get the spotlight. And um, on top of that, you know, the business partner with Shopify, to, uh, you know, extend grants and just different advertising services, uh, you know, to spa businesses in the city. So this is going to be an ongoing program for the business. It won't just be uh, this this season. Shopify is an e-commerce company that provides online platforms for businesses. That was a very intentional decision in partnership uh, to afford small businesses an opportunity to utilize our platform. Tyrell Kirkham with the Pistons organization again. To uh, tap into new audiences and hopefully grow their businesses. You know, we really wanted to figure out both in venue, but also using all of our digital channels, you know, social specifically to highlight small businesses, Um, whether that was bringing them out to a game, whether that was giving each of our employees a stipend to go spend at a, at, a, at a black business during the month of February last year, um, finding ways to uh, incorporate small businesses in everything that we do. I'm not actually sure what it's called, but you have like the uh, the light that kind of goes around the arena and they'll have different advertisements on there and uh, they'll put the small business up there as well. Uh, you know, so they're getting pretty prime. I guess advertising real estate within the arena. It doesn't feel like it's a secondary thing. Like they're promoting them as though, you know, it's like a whoever else you would pr- promote, whether it's Chrysler or Ace Hardware or whoever. Piston fans, clap your hands. Stop your feet. Once again, time to meet the 313s D. 
Detroit Pistons. Really want to get our listeners into what it's like to be at a Pistons game, what that experience is like, and what elements you all have pulled in to create this this game day experience for for attendees. And and with that, I'm I'm curious, like when the initial talks about embracing Detroit artists, particular Detroit performers, rappers, and the city's black culture first start. What was that like? So on the highest level, you know, bringing Big Sean on as our creative director of innovation. That's music. That's a bigger relationship beyond just music. But obviously, he's a successful artist from this city. But then there were so many other people, you know, T Grizzlies, the Sada Babies, the Babyface Rays. Four two Dugs, Curtis Roaches of the world. Um, you know, we really wanted to run the, the gamut of the, the music that you saw a lot of other cities gravitating towards this Detroit sound. And um, we wanted to put that on, on front, seat, front street here uh, at, our, at our arena, knowing that, um, you know, as we try to tap into our, a younger base, um, music is at the center of that. Obviously our players, music is at the center of everything they do. Our, our purpose is, again, wide range and variety to showcase all um, types of Detroit creatives and Detroit Youth Choir, you know, internationally known, uh, their, 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 their work, again, speaks for itself. Come on, Detroit, make some noise! I had the opportunity to speak with Anthony White, the artistic director of the Detroit Youth Choir, about this tie to the Pistons. And they aren't the only ones feeling seen. During halftime, I spoke with some fans to see what their thoughts were on the Pistons' recent moves. I mean, it's not really news that Detroit is in a new era or an evolution, you know, depending on the word you want to call it, it could be gentrification, um, revolution has also been a word that's used. But the Pistons returning to the city is definitely a part of that story. And a common question that people ask when they talk about the city and how it's evolving is who it's for. So now I want to just pose that question to you. All of these things, the acts that you're talking about, the branding, who is all of this for? This is for the people of Detroit. The people who have been here who have grinded in this city um, and it's our intent and, and very purposeful 
that we connect with our city and the people of our city. I mean, you know, with respect to the black audience here in Detroit, uh, it's it's at, the, at our you know on our list of priorities. That is very important to us. Um, we've we've made that commitment. I think with this being it was eighty percent now black um, in this city. Uh, I feel like hopefully. It's something that everyone will appreciate, regardless of where you're from, how long you've rooted for the team, outsiders, insiders. Um, but we we want to lean in, and that that's an important part of our go forward strategy. And again, hopefully the uh, you know the the city is taking notice to to our efforts. The Pistons are finding ways to promote the city that isn't just depending on what's happening on the court. Thank Kofa again. I think it's a way to keep fans engaged, to promote the, the city and to uh, enhance your brand and, and say, you know, like we we want Detroit culture to be our culture as well. I think those things resonate with fans regardless of what's happening on the court. And, uh, you know, it's about establishing the Pistons as not only a basketball brand, but as a, a city brand as well. Amari Sankofa, thank you so much for talking to me and, and being our guest on On The Line this week. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Additionally, we'd like to thank the Pistons organization for the media provided in this episode. And thank you to Free Press Business reporter Chanel Stitt for her help. This episode was produced by me and Darcy Moran with help from Tad Davis. Jeanette Delgado and Marianne Struman are our executive producers and Peter Batia is our editor. The music for the show was called Fort Trumbull and was produced by DJ Lost Boy. Thanks for listening. And if you like this show, leave a rating and subscribe. Share it with your friends and family. Uh, It makes a big difference for us. All right. See y'all next week.